I'm not paying a finder's fee for stolen property. Thief earns himself a felony instead. I had just moved to a new city for work and had been working there for about three months, so I'm still pretty new to the area. My apartment complex, I would say, is a nicer part of the city and is pretty well kept, so I didn't really expect anyone to go and try breaking into cars. I was set to travel and had a pretty early drive, so I'd packed everything for my week-long trip the night before so that I could get up and just get on the road. The next morning, I walk out to my car and I see clothes off to the side of my car, and thinking it was weird, started to look around the car. Turns out, my car had been broken into and was cleaned out. Out of the trunk, they took my laptop bag, which had both my personal computer and a government computer. Two gym bags, one that had my work clothes and the other that had my workout clothes and personal hygiene stuff, and a backpack that had my Nintendo Switch and office supplies in it. They also took up to $50 out of the console where I keep change and random bills for parking. This obviously throws a wrench into my work travel, so I call my supervisor and explain the situation and come back into work. It's my fault I left all that stuff in my car, so I had to go to our security and IT office and explain what happened and see what the next steps were to get a new work computer. During this meeting with the physical security manager, which was three hours after I found my car broken into, I get a call from a local number and turns out this guy had found my laptops on the side of the road when he was coming from visiting his mum. My bag had a contact me if found with a number on it. Conversation goes as follows. Ah, uh, hey man, I found your laptops on the side of the road. I figured you'd probably want them back. They look pretty important. Government laptops are plastered with stickers with official jargon and returning instructions. Oh, for sure. I'm currently at work now, but I can come meet you or whatever works. Yeah, man, I'm just coming home back from uh, visiting my mom, so I'm just trying to get home so I can relax. Oh, cool. Uh, I can make it work. Can you text me your address and everything so I can just come to you? I'll send it to you here in a second. Uh, it's also my birthday, so if I could get some money for it, like a finder's fee or whatever, I think that'd be cool. Oh yeah, man, whatever you need. See you in a bit. As soon as I get off the phone, I call the local police in that area and explain that this guy is trying to extort money from me to get stolen goods back. They instruct me to meet them a few blocks away from the residence, and they will send a plainclothes cop and officers to act on my behalf so I'm not in direct contact with the guy, just in case, since the situation sounds sketchy. I go and meet them where they go to the residence. The guy is hesitant seeing the cop cars and takes a few minutes to return the bag. With laptops in it, they bring the bag to me to identify the laptops and everything is still there. I accept the bag and got my laptop and bag back. Easy enough. On the drive back to work, no more than 15 minutes later, this guy still had my number and starts going off. Bad, unreadable spelling and all is seething through text messages on how I could get the police involved. He was trying to be a good Samaritan and he should have thrown my crap in the garbage. So, I did the normal thing and blocked the number. Now I'm still missing everything else, including the Nintendo Switch, which was in a case with seven games, which is important. I was originally going to take the loss on it and take it as a stupidity tax since it was almost impossible to get back. However, something didn't sit right with me with this guy and thinking if he did have it, he was going to try and sell it fast and cheap. I went on to Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist searching for a Switch for cheap around the same location as his house. Bada -ba bing bingo! The ad reads, $200. Nintendo Switch with 7 games and case lightly used, no charger or dock, must be gone today. The location was enabled and was within 2 miles of his address. The phone number was the same and the dock and charger were in my apartment, so I had a buddy of mine who lived in the next city over contact him asking him if he could hold on to it till tomorrow, since he wouldn't be in town until the next day and he would pay him $300 instead. The dude agrees, and also gets him to read off all seven games that were there. This was to buy us more time so I can coordinate with the police. The next morning, I get everything together to go make a case to police to assist me with this. Police report, the Craigslist ad, the serial number from Nintendo, the screenshots of the text messages between him and my buddy. 
I make my case and the police agree to do the same thing as the day before and meet me somewhere else to go over what the plan was. I meet them and go over his address and what all I had missing. These are different offices than the day before and they recognize the address and the name. We found out this guy is known for this stuff and is currently on probation. So we come up with a plan where my buddy will call us on his work phone so we can hear the conversation and call him on his regular phone to see what's going on. The police use a plain car, go to this meetup spot, and acting like my buddy, scoop the guy up and get him to cough up the rest of the stolen goods. They were able to recover all my items, including all my clothes and bags. He ends up going to jail and earns a new felony on his record for receiving stolen property. I think I would have lost the rest if I didn't do the digging on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. Our next story was posted by user Clickety Clickety, titled, I was recently privy to this email conversation from a friend who was a tabletop RPG developer. The names and the details have been changed of course. From Chris to Tom. Subject, cancelled orders, help. To whom this may concern, I'm inquiring personally about new popular RPG, which was recently released by Big Explosions. We have placed several orders for large quantities of this title due to high demand, and each time we place it, we receive the below attached message that our order unfortunately had to be rejected. I understand this may be a glitch in your system of some sort, but I would be very appreciative if you could resolve this so we can order this title. Yours, Chris, owner, Big Down Home RPG Game Store. And the reply from Tom to Chris, CC Big Explosions Publishing Staff, including Clickety Clickety. Subject, RE Cancelled Orders, Help. Hi Chris, it's been a long time. I don't know if you remember me, but I actually grew up in hometown and frequented your store through middle school and high school. Your store and the games we played made an incredible impression on me and influenced my career path. It made me want to write and develop role-playing games, which led me to start small indie gaming company and move out here to Seattle to collaborate with other developers and develop it. You might recall back in 2016 that New Popular RPG was initially released as an indie title called New Less Popular RPG. We fronted the cost on publishing and marketing and sought out game stores in the Northwest United States to playtest our games. I, however, never forgot your kindness and those years spent in the back room of your store playing Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. So I took a 16 hour road trip to show up at your store and personally ask if you would be interested in selling it on your shelves upon release. At that time, you told me that you only had room for big titles and that you couldn't accept every indie RPG developer that knocks on your door. I then offered to send you free copies of the title to sell for 100% profit because honestly, I just wanted to have my own RPG on shelves in the store that was so important to my youth. But you laughed. You laughed. Laughed and told me again that you only had room for big titles. That the RPG industry was really cutthroat and that you didn't have room for even one copy of my book. Last year in 2018, I was privileged to merge with and acquire the much larger Big Explosions Publishing and all of its titles. We are sincerely blessed to be able to share the love of RPGs internationally, and this year we re-released my game as New Popular RPG with a half million dollar marketing campaign that has been incredibly successful. In conclusion Chris, you are free to order absolutely any title from the Big Explosions distribution list. There are many to choose from, however, the distributor has been given strict instruction not to distribute new popular RPG to your store. I'm sure there are much bigger titles that you can fill your shelves with. Yours most sincerely, Tom, Director, Big Explosions Gaming. And our next story was posted by user Scotty3Hotty, titled, Luxury Car Dealership Wants to Treat Customer Like Dirt, Ends Up Washing His Car Instead. This isn't my story. It happened to my ex-classmate's dad, but it's too sweet of a story to not share. His dad is a pretty swealthy guy and owns his own construction business. My classmate always showed up in a fancy clothes and car. 
One day, Dad walks into a car dealership. He was interested in buying a Mercedes G-Wagon. He went inside and was ignored for almost half an hour while other cuts were treated, or customers. Eventually, a couple of salesmen approached Dad and asked him what he's doing here. Dad starts asking about the cars. The salesmen were very dismissive and sarcastic in response to him. It's clear they aren't taking him seriously and begin to leave. Dad becomes irritated and asks what their problem was. They argue for a minute when the manager comes and tells Dad to leave. Dad had just come from work and was wearing slightly dirty jeans, boots, and a t-shirt. He's also a dark-skinned individual. Both of these factors probably made him look lower class in their eyes. Little did they know, a few weeks later, Dad ends up purchasing the car at another dealership. He negotiated free car washes for life as he traded in one of his luxury cars. Apparently, he was able to go to the other dealerships in the area who authorized the same thing regarding car washes. Dad ends up going to the first dealership and throws the keys in the front counter. He demanded a car wash. The same manager eventually came by to object, but Dad showed him all the paperwork. He looked a bit shocked and begrudgingly got the process started. Dad had been going back almost every day for car washes. He always cheekily smiles at all the staff members with a crap-eating grin as a greeting, especially the two salesmen. They now just hang their head in shame and walk away whenever they see him. And our next story was posted by user Jack86, titled, Demand Proof of Illness? Hope you have eye bleach. I had a boss one time who was such a control freak that she demanded to know specifically why I was calling out sick. Wildly illegal where I live, by the way. One day. And for reference, I'm typically the guy who never gets sick, so it wasn't an attendance issue. I told her I think I had food poisoning. Turned out to be true, and I actually wrote up an unethical life pro tip based off of this story a while back. And she kept pressing me as to explain what my symptoms were and why I couldn't make it in all via text. I had finally had enough and was like, look, I'm not physically capable of working today and you're not allowed to ask me personal questions about illness and medical history. She threatened me with a write-up if I couldn't specifically explain and prove why I couldn't make it to work. This is where the pro-revenge comes in. I was about to send her something horrific that she could not unsee and she wouldn't be able to do jack shit about it since she technically asked for it. Being that I was living in the bathroom for more than two days, this inquiry was day one, and had aggressive diarrhea every 15 to 30 minutes, and the worst abdominal pain I've ever experienced, I lost my crap, <laughs> and took a pretty disturbing picture of me painting the bowl brown right before I flushed, and sent it to her. No joke, it looked like I power washed the inside of the toilet with feces and built a turd island in the middle of the water. It honestly looked like a poop volcano had erupted. I had no idea your bowels could contain so much. This is happening every 15 to 30 minutes and I haven't been able to leave the bathroom for the last six hours. Here's your proof. Check the timestamp. Also, sent a screenshot of the timestamp. I'll let you know as soon as I can if I'll be in tomorrow. That's the text message he said. So, after three days off, I show up for my shift, sleep deprived and sore from sleeping in my bathtub or on the floor for two and a half days. The jerk not having any of it, but I was finally through the worst. She immediately escorts me into the office where our regional HR rep is waiting for me and we all sit down. He has paperwork in front of him and is discussing the quote unquote incident with me and gets me to acknowledge what I did, and that sending unprovoked and defensive content to co-workers constitutes harassment and blah blah blah. Right before he asks me to sign a final write-up, if you do something like this again, you're fired. Before signing, I ask him, did she tell you why I sent this? Well, he was dumbfounded, and he said this isn't really an excusable, and basically handed me a screenshot printout with the text messages with well, a tramp deleted everything in the exchange in her phone, but me saying, sorry, but I need to take a sick day today, and the picture. I laughed and handed him my phone and said, here is the full exchange. 
He asked me to leave and give them a few minutes. About 10 minutes later, he calls me in by myself and explains what I already knew, that she was the harasser and that she had aggressively violated policy laws and would be dealt with, and to call him if anything like this ever happens again. I found out from one of the assistant managers that she ended up getting a final written notice and was super close to being fired, and it prevented her from getting a big promotion that she was being looked at for. So, if you ever come across a D-bag boss who wants to play doctor and question your sick leave, send them diarrhea pics, and they'll either shut the frick up or give you lawsuit material. And our last story was posted by user DStriker120, titled, You took $200, you lost $21,000. So, most users of computers will probably have some experience with this. You know when you're online shopping and sometimes a box pops up and says click this promo code, sign up, yada yada yada? Well, we know they are scams. My mistake, I first clicked the wrong X. They put a fake one on top and I clicked it. I immediately shut the page and thought that that was the end of it. Nope. So, the site I bought the Hanukkah gift I was getting for my mother sold my credit card information to the pop-up. I activated that when I clicked the wrong X. I was a teenager, relatively new to my checking accounts. I checked my statement for December and all was well. I didn't check for the next couple of months because I didn't use it for anything. There should be no charges, I know better now. When I did check, I noticed all these small, insignificant charges that weren't mine. Always less than $10 and usually around 2 bucks. But the multiple charges added up to just over $200. When I looked at this, I found the connection. I called the thieving company and told them they stole my information and are illegally charging my card. They didn't deny it, but they also didn't care. I wanted my money back, but they refused repeatedly. I gave them so many chances to fix everything with just that. I eventually warned them that I would have to sue if they didn't give back what they stole. Well, they laughed. Turns out there was a class action lawsuit in progress, which my lawyer used as leverage for a quick payout. We sued for fraud and violation of federal communication laws. What they're doing is very illegal and happens every day. This included a lot of popular stores and websites. Since they were 100% in the wrong and committed a crime, and I was a child who bought her mother a gift, I won the case. I received a judgment of $21,000. I told them it would all go away by just refunding the $200, but they refused. They seemed to think a teenager threatening to sue a massive corporation that does nothing but break the law wasn't much of a threat. What they should have noticed, I was buying a Hanukkah gift. Hanukkah! Everyone I know is a lawyer. Alright guys, if you liked that episode, tell me what you thought of it in the comments. If there's anything else you guys want to see, I'll take the information on board and I'll hopefully make an episode on it. Anyway guys, I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.